It's awesome to, to have the honor to be here. You know, it's a privilege for myself. Uh, it's great to see Brian and Marco and some of the people in the room. You know, Barry Alvarez is in there. He offered me my first ever scholarship when I was in high school. So, you know, it goes back a, a long time now. And then to be part of, you know, the 150th anniversary celebration, it's, it's awesome. And I'm, I'm honored to be here. Yep. I mean, I think I, I've said it before. He's the reason why I came here. I mean, he was from Wyckoff. I grew up in a little neighboring town, so he had a vision back then for what Rutgers could be and, and what he wanted to make it. And, you know, he sold me and, and all of us on that vision to, to become what we, you know, were able to make it back then. And I think he, he's been a mentor to me. He's been a father figure to me. I, I, I read an article about you know, Pete Tverdov said, you know, it wasn't always easy being around him and playing for him. It was hard. Um, but that's what you want because he gets the best out of you and you know, ultimately prepares you for life after football. I think it is important. I think it kind of shows uh, you know, how it's been the last couple of years that you know, as weird as it sounds, it's, it's probably one of the most important things. Or at least someone that you know, truly understands the landscape and, and uh, high school coaches in North Jersey. I was one of them for a little bit, and they're not easy people to work with. You know, they, they always want something. They want their kids offered because it's a state school, and you kind of have to be able to balance that. And I think the bottom line is you have to have relationships with those guys. And, you know, obviously, Coach Seattle has relationships with whoever, you know, it would be that does come in next needs to have relationships with those guys. Mike, did you make it uh, yeah, we talk frequently. Um, really nothing about this, if you believe it or not. Um, but, we, yeah, we'll speak every once in a while. Mike, it's been a little while now since you've been in coaching. Do you miss it at all? Um, I, I don't. Well, I shouldn't say that. I miss aspects. I miss game day. I think every football player, football coach, you know, that's what you do it for, game day. Um, there's a lot of other stuff in the high school world that you have to do that kind of goes unnoticed, that you don't necessarily get paid for, that you don't, um, <clears throat> that doesn't show up. Um, so I don't miss that piece of it. I miss being around the kids. I miss being around the other coaches. I'm a football guy. I've played football my whole life. So I miss that piece of it, but but not enough to be in the high school environment. Mm -hmm. But you'd be open to college environment. I think you put in a tweet recently. No, I think the biggest thing was, no, and, and so I did, <laughs> and I totally, I kind of screwed it up. So I had an offer to go to college uh, yeah. this past February when I stepped down at Don Bosco, and I didn't because I didn't want to go live that lifestyle. Um, you know, now, if, if whoever gets here and, you know, I know they're going to be here for 20 years and I have an opportunity, what I considered, obviously you have to consider every opportunity that will come your way, but the football had done so much for me in my life that it was time to kind of step away and start a new, new career path and and really, and, and move forward with them. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, you know, for us being the first team to ever play college football, uh, there isn't a ton of history. Um, there, there hasn't been a lot of really good times, and I think, you know, the times that were really good, those guys need to be engaged, because there's guys that are still playing on Sunday that were part of those teams in the 40s, really probably only in the 40s and Clark Harris, but and some of the, the younger guys that are still playing. But then you go back to the, you know, the Marco, the Ray Lucases, and all the guys that have kind of built the foundation for, for what Rutgers football has been. Um, I think all those guys want to be involved because it's been a special place for all of us. And the more you can be around it, the more you feel like you're a part of it again. Of course. I, I mean, you don't want that. I mean, it's, it's tough, you know, you feel for the kids, you feel for the fan base, you feel for the university because, you know, there's been a lot invested in the program. Um, you know, I think you need someone now to kind of get things going the right way to, to re-engage the fan base, to re-engage the recruits, to, you know, go out and win games. It's, you're playing in the Big Ten East. It's probably the hardest, you know, side of the conference in America. So are you going to beat 12-0 and win a national championship? Probably not. Maybe every, once every, you know, 20 years. But you got to be competitive and you got to be able to play and win the games that you should win. And then, you know, play the other games tough.